Alrighty guys, I have a quick one for y'all today. I'm going to be making some upgrades to my hydraulic press. First of all, the cylinder has a bit of slop in the clevis where it attaches to the one inch plate. So we're going to fix that. I also got a message from a viewer who mentioned that the 716s bolts I used could be a weak point on this design. I really don't think that there would be any real risk to life and limb with a failure of these bolts since there shouldn't be a large amount of built up potential energy when working with hot steel. However, I figured it would be worth beefing up the assembly just for good measure. While I'm taking this guy apart, I want to mention that I'm not a structural engineer, so build and use a press like this one at your own risk. Do your own due diligence on the design and always overbuild. With that caveat in mind, I like to take a rough pass at the math on these bolts. For a grade 9 7 sixteenths of an inch bolt, the diameter is around 437 thousandths of an inch, and the tensile area at the threads is 0 0.106 inches squared. The ultimate tensile strength of a grade 9 fastener is 180,000 psi. For the math problem, I'll be using a safety factor of 1.25. The max force that a 7 sixteenths of an inch grade 9 bolt can be pulled can be determined by this formula which yields a result of around 6.8 tons per bolt. If all 8 bolts are resisting the motion, they can handle around 54 tons of force. I ran similar calculations for shear and got 36.6 tons. My press has an 11 gallon per minute pump that can achieve around 2500 psi in pressure, which is around 25 tons with my 5 inch cylinder. If I upgraded my pump to one capable of 3000 psi, my press could push around 29 and a half tons. I feel like these are reasonable margins of safety with the 8 grade 9 bolts in this design. However, like I said, I am not a structural engineer, so take my opinion with a large grain of salt. So with all that out of the way, let's reduce some of the play in the cylinder. I got these large 1 and 1 quarter of an inch hole 3 inch OD washers from Amazon. Most people use these for playing washers, but they're perfect for what we're trying to do here. One washer was able to easily fit in the first side of each clevis, but I had to reduce the thickness of the second washer for the other side. You can use a flat platen to do this work or an angle grinder, but I decided to use my surface grinding attachment. I went back and forth a few times during this process to test the fit. To push my cylinder as far over as possible onto the new washers on the front side of the press, I used a 2x4 with some clamps. I then used a hammer and punch to slide the newly modified washer in between the 1 inch plate and clevis. This was a super tight fit. I probably should have reduced the thickness of this washer by a few more thousandths of an inch, but I got impatient and just hammered it in. I repeated the process on the bottom clevis, which was slightly less of a tight fit. With the washers installed, we can move on to our new hardware. I purchased these grade 9 7 16 bolts from McMaster Car. I also ordered some grade 9 washers and nuts. While these bolts were expensive, they have a huge tensile strength of 180,000 psi, so I figured they were worth it. I had to reduce the length of two of them to fit in my crudely welded traveling block. I welded up this traveling block back in my teens, and while it's working just fine, it's one part of the press that I can see myself replacing or modifying in the future. With all eight grade 9 bolts cinched down to 14,967 foot-pounds, I tested out the press. Everything seemed nice and tight now. The cylinder does not have a wobble to it anymore, and I know that my 716 bolts are nice and beefy. So once again, if you're building one of these presses, you're doing so at your own risk. Make it beefier than you think you'll need. If you're nervous about these bolts, you could weld the front plate on and bolt the back plate. This would be a little harder to take apart, but you wouldn't have the bolts in the front. You could also add a few more bolts by putting more holes in the traveling block and the front and back plates. For my part, I'm pretty sure I'm in the clear now. I want to say thanks to the poster for pointing out a potential weak spot in this press. I really appreciate it when y'all comment on these videos, and it helps me step up my game. As always, I hope y'all got something out of this video, and have a solid weekend. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Thank you.